Hello friends and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about something that I think is pretty cool and that's honey tokens. So first of all, what are honey tokens? Well, as the name suggests, the honey tokens are like any other honey pot. These are sweet treats that we leave around for unsuspecting attackers to trip over. A honey token specifically is an API key that looks real and for all intents and purposes is actually real but doesn't pose any threat and alerts us when someone tries to use it. Why is this useful? Well, we can pepper these in our infrastructure, in our code, and if someone tries to use one of these, we'll get an alert, and then we know that someone that shouldn't be there is inside our infrastructure. It's an early warning system, and these are great. In this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to make them using all your own infrastructure. You can also do some pretty cool things with honey tokens, like leaking them in public places and watching attackers try and hack you in real time. We're gonna do that at the end of the video. But right now, we're gonna dive straight in and start creating our honey tokens. In the description of this video, you're gonna find a lot of helpful links. The very first one goes to a blog post that I created, a tutorial that I created, that's gonna go through exactly what we are step by step. This may be a helpful guide to help you follow along in this video as well. The next link in the description actually goes to a GitHub open source project called GG Canary. GG Canary is an open source project that helps us create honey tokens for AWS accounts. That means that we're gonna create fake AWS tokens that will alert us when tr someone tries to use it. The first thing that we're going to do is clone this project locally. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on clone and we're gonna copy this. And using whatever Git client you want or your trusty old command line interface, we're gonna clone this project. All right, I've now got this open in uh, VS Code, Visual Studio Code, but whatever IDE or text editor you use, that is fine. Now that we've got the project cloned, we're gonna come back to this, but we need to set up a few things first. So we'll get the boring stuff done. We're gonna to need to head over to AWS. If you don't have an AWS account, you can create one. It's free to set up. You get some opening credits. You're not gonna run up a huge bill as long as you make sure you don't leak your keys. Whenever you're making honey tokens or any other service that requires an AWS account, make sure you create a new user every time. This way we can limit our permissions and we can also delete it once we're finished using it, if we're finished using it. So that's what we're going to do first. In our AWS console, we're gonna type in the search bar, I am identity access manager. To the left of the screen, we're gonna click on the users button. And finally, we're going to add a new user. So what is our user's name? I'm gonna name all mine pretty much the exact same thing throughout this tutorial, which is honey token. This means I won't get confused. You can call it whatever you want, just make sure that you remember it. Now the next we need to attach some policies, basically permissions of what this user is allowed to do. We're gonna attach these directly. And as you can see, we've got a few options. So though there are a thousand uh, pre-made policies that we can choose from, but we're gonna add one more because it's much easier to create a policy if you know what it needs to do than it is to try and find one that matches it. So we're gonna create some new policies. And then here we've got the visual editor, but we're gonna go ahead and click on JSON. In the GitHub project, there's actually predefined policy to help us with the minimum permissions that we need. So if we head to the GitHub project or just the readme in our cloned project, we can head down and we've got it under the setup, we've got make sure you have sufficient rights to perform this task. If we click on that in our docs, in a document called deploy user rights markdown, you'll see a nice JSON here. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy this version here, head back to our admin console, and we're gonna paste this in. And click on next. If you have lots of policies, you can create tags to help you find it again in the future. I'm just gonna create a tag called honey token. And we just need to give our policy a name and a description. Okay, so now we need to click back on our tabs because creating that policy opened a new tab. 
We're going to click refresh here. And now we'll see it's got 1042. And we need to type in here honey token. And we have some policies. So we're going to attach that policy and click on next. Finally, we're going to create our user. So now we have our honey token user in our AWS account. Next thing we need to do is set this up so that it, we have credentials for it locally on our computer. So we're going to click on honey tokens. We're going to click on security credentials. I'm going to scroll down here to access keys. So we're going to create some access keys for that. We're going to click on create access key. I'm going to go for command line interface. Oh, I've got to tick the box. And then go next. All right, so now we have a public key and a private key, an access key and a secret access key. Now that we have our user set up on AWS, we need to set it up in our local environment. So we've created some keys. We need to put these keys somewhere. So we can do this with the AWS CLI tool. Now, if you don't have this installed, we're going to need to have it installed now. If you're not sure, just type an AWS into your terminal. If you get command unknown, then you just need to go through the steps to install it. There's a link down below in the description. So now we need to run the command AWS configure dash dash profile. At the end of this, we're going to type in the name of the profile that we want to create. Now I created a user called honey tokens. They don't have to be the exact same, but it's much easier if they are so that you know. All right, so then it's going to prompt us for some questions. First thing it asks for is our access key. We just created this. So let's head back across and copy our access key. We're going to paste that in. Then we're going to copy our secret access key. Paste that in there too. Next, it's going to ask us for our default region. I'm going to type in US East 1. But if you want to look up where your closest data center is, you can. We're going to type that in. And then default out, uh, output format, we're just going to type in none. Okay, so we've created our AWS account. We've created our AWS user locally. Let's move on to the next step. We're going to open back up the GG Canary project in our IDE, in my case, Visual Studio. And then we're going to click on here on the file that says backend.tf. This is a Terraform file. Here we have variables that we need to change. You'll see here it says use the same values as TF vars. So we'll create that file in a minute. There's a little bit of a chicken egg thing. Which one comes first? We're going to use the backend.tf. We're going to change these values first and we'll base TF vars off these values. So first of all, profile, what is this? This is the profile that we just created, our AWS profile. So I called mine honey token. Again, this is not the user on AWS. If you name them differently, make sure you use the profile. This is why it's so much easier to use the same name. The region, US East 1. Next line there, we see something called bucket. So what is this? This is going to be our S3 bucket. This is going to store our data for us. Buckets are a little bit tricky because they need to be named uniquely. And what I mean uniquely, I mean uniquely global. So I'm going to call mine honey token. Then I'm going to put in today's date, 10th February 2023. And then I'm just going to put in my name. This way I can just be guaranteed that this is going to be unique. The only person that will create something like this really is me. And the last two, we're going to leave them as is. So we're going to save this file and move on to the next step. So right now, we're going to be creating this tvars file. So we're going to go new file here, and we're going to call it terraform.tfvars. This file is all about how we're going to get notified when our honey tokens go off. Now we can connect to lots of different services. So we can connect up to SendGrid, we can connect up to Slack notifications, we can use the SES notifier, and many, many more. We're gonna use Slack for a couple of reasons. One, 
in this project there's a template for us so it's much easier and two i think slack is probably the easiest thing to set up you'll see a folder in here called examples we're going to go ahead and click on that that's going to take us to examples tf underscore vars and we're going to click on the slack notifier we're going to copy all of this head back to our tvars file here we have more variables that we need to change so what is our aws profile this is honey token next we need our bucket really important that the bucket name here is exactly what we put in our backend.tf file let's click back into our backend.tf file we're going to copy our bucket name we're going to paste this in there and i'm going to change this to to east one because that's just keeping everything the same next we need to set a global prefix now the global prefix has to be unique so i'm actually going to again add the date to this to make sure that there's no collision we're almost there we just need to do a couple more things before we can get going one of those things is because we're using slack well we're going to need to create a slack account a slack workspace and then generate a slack webhook we can do all that really easy so head over to slack.com if you don't have an account you can create one really quickly and once we've created an account we're going to click at the top and the button that said create new workspace so we're going to go ahead and create a new workspace i'm going to call my workspace honey alerts next we're going to create a new channel so it's going to go create new channel and we're just going to call them honey alert now that we've created our workspace and our channel we need to create our webhook almost there on the three dots uh, click and head down to apps in the search bar we're going to type in webhooks and we're going to click on the option that says incoming webhooks and finally click add to slack now we need to select a channel that we want the alerts to and we have one there called honey alerts and we're going to go ahead and click add incoming webhooks integration so this gives us here a webhook url fantastic let's go ahead and change this where it says redacted now we can go ahead and save this file so we've actually done all the boring stuff now it's time for the fun stuff it's time to create our tokens all right inside our project there's a new file called gg canaries dot auto dot tf vars now this is our actual tokens and this is really just the format that we want so we've got gg token one we can rename this i'm going to call it honey alert one next we can add some tags these tags are great if we have lots of these so that we can create specifics around where we've leaked these so i'm going to say that we've leaked this in github and then we can even be more specific we can add multiple tags back in project and then we're going to say secret repo so just to say if i put this on github it's part of the back end team in a secret repository right this gives us an idea of where we're going we can be as descriptive as we want we can add up to 20 of these tags so we can be specific about where we've put these the source i'm going to put vcs because that's our version control system all right now we can repeat rinse and repeat this out of the next steps the token two and again we can create as many of these as we want by just adding them down so we're going to go ahead and save our guardian canaries and we're just about ready for the next and final step which is producing them final prerequisites before we go ahead is we're going to need to have terraform installed locally if you don't have terraform there's a link in the description on how to install it uh, again if you're on a mac device you can use brew but there's easy instructions for anyone to be able to follow once terraform is installed the only only prerequisite is jq again there's links in the description of how to install this and again if you're on a mac you can use brew okay so we've got all that out the way we can generate our canary tokens now 
The first thing that I'm going to run here to prevent any comments saying that it's not working is we're going to run uh, a quick script. We're going to go dot forward slash scripts forward slash check underscore setup dot sh. Um, when we're going to run this, this is going to check that we have all the dependencies. So we should have JQ Terraform AWS. All of these have been found. So we can feel confident that we're going to the next step. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to navigate into our backend directory. So we're going to go CDTF backend. We're going into our backend area here. And we're going to type Terraform init. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we don't get any errors at this time. When we get the message that it has been successfully initialized, if you get an error message, uh, just go back through the steps, make sure that everything's set up okay. Make sure that we have all of the, uh, you have all the prerequisites there. The next thing we need to do is we need to apply the Terraform backend. So we can do this with the command Terraform apply. Don't hit enter just yet. We've got to do more stuff. If we do this, it's going to ask you a bunch of questions and we're going to have to go back into our Terraform TF vars file and manually paste them all in. We can skip over that step by pointing to our TF vars file that we created. So we can type this in manually, of course, or you can copy this from the readme of the project. And we're basically saying that we're going to apply it. And we're going to use the TF var file that we have at this location. So we're going to go ahead and run that. Fingers crossed again, our Terraform backend will be applied with no issues. So this is now going to go through and create resources on our AWS account, like our S3 bucket, uh, etc. All right, we're not quite done yet. We need to basically do the, those two steps again, but back in our main project. So we're going to navigate one uh, one file directory back using the double dots, CD double dots. And then same thing, Terraform init. So the next step we're going to do is Terraform apply. Now we don't need to specify uh, any variables this time. We can just go ahead and run straight apply. And we want to go ahead and click yes, obviously. And this last step. So that's it. We're now set up our Terraform backend is running in the cloud. We have created uh, resources around that. This may be the first time you've ever created uh, functioning backend applications that are running in AWS. And if that is, that's awesome, good for you. The only thing there's to do is to generate our Canary tokens. Now, while this is all running, uh, we can actually go through and create as many of these as we want. We can adjust our GG Canaries auto.tf vars file and create more now if you want to. Uh, but it's a very simple command from here. So now we just need to generate our keys. So we're going to go forward slash script list keys. And there we have it. These are our keys. So, so right here, these are our keys. We've got an ID and a secret and a secret key. Now, these are actually valid keys in the sense that they exist. They work and they're uh, they will ping AWS. What they won't do is allow anyone to gain any lateral movement into your account, or they won't allow anyone uh, to 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 do anything malicious. All these keys are going to do is alert you every time someone tries to use them. We have it set up so that they're going to alert you through a Slack channel. So if I try and use one of these keys, basically what's going to happen is I'll get an alert in the Slack channel to let me know. And it will also let me know these tags that I have here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's try and use these keys. There is also an easy way to test this thanks to this project. They've created a script that's basically going to call the AWS endpoint with our canary name. So Again, we can find this in the readme, but it's uh, again in our scripts folder and the script is called ggcanary underscore call dot sh. And then we need to pass it uh, a name. So we have honey alerts one, two, and three. So we can go honey alert 
that's the name of the, the basically the the honey token that we want to call we're going to run that and it's going to perform a test for it after a couple of minutes you should notice that you will get an alert in your slack channel with the time that this alert came through now that's how you know everything's set up and everything's working correctly all right we've created our honey tokens congratulations it's awesome uh what do we do with them now so we want to put them in strategic places where we want to protect honey tokens aren't a line of defense they're a, me a method of alerting so we still want to have all our normal defenses set up around that but we want we want might want to put them in some scripts uh, in our network so some breaches like that happened where uber had passwords in their network an attacker made it in and was able to move laterally into different systems so we can put them in some scripts on our network they look real and attacker will probably find them we can put them in our code repositories because these are a high value target for attackers as well and we may even want to put them inside some messaging systems or in some side some internal wikis again all places that attackers are going to look for these types of keys so at the start of this video i said that we're going to do something pretty fun we're going to leak these publicly and we're going to watch what happens now i love doing this and because you've just created honey tokens you can do it too so follow along with me all right, so we're gonna open up a project that I have here on GitHub, a public repository called uh, Secret Project. Uh, there's some dummy files in here that kind of just make it look like it's a real project. I've done a couple of commits. But what we do have here is a .env file, an environment variable file. This is the type of file that attackers are going to be looking for. Now, I already have some secrets in this file. These are just dummy secrets to make it look uh, extra juicy. And we're going to paste our secrets in this file. So I'm actually copying across uh, two credentials here uh, just to give us a little bit more interesting results. I kind of want to see if, uh, if, if people are going to try and exploit one of them or both of them at the same time. It's probably going to be both. Uh, we're going to commit these changes here. And that is it. We have just committed the biggest sin in development now you're going to get lots of alerts from this and you're going to keep getting them for the next few hours and days uh, as different people sift through this information so it's been about half an hour since i leaked those credentials and boy oh boy do we have a lot of activity on our canary tokens What's interesting is that, yes, we get lots of information. We get the, the token that it is. So my Honey Alert 2, my Honey Alert 1. We get the tags that I have on this that helps us identify where it is. And we also get the type of call that the user has made. So the most common one here is get account. But you also see some other uh, calls being made, such as list buckets and get caller identity. These different calls are basically what the attacker is trying to do. This is quite interesting because you can see the same IP address go through multiple stages. First, I'll check that it's valid, and then they're gonna try and do different things. You'll also see how they've tried to exploit it. This one's really interesting. You, you see some of them here, you'll see Python requests or different areas. We've got a couple here that are using Truffle Hog, an open source secrets detection tool to be able to try and uh, find these. So we can even see the tools that some of the attackers are using. All right. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you've been able to create at least a couple of honey tokens. If you've done anything particularly cool with them, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear how you're using these. Make sure you like and subscribe to this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making it. And remember, good code is secure code.